person of the Trinity. This second person of the Trinity has two natures now, of both incarnation, human and divine. Yes, this human nature remains with him for eternity. Are you aware of that? So, sorry, the human, name, the, sorry. the human nature of most incarnation yeah, 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 yeah. stays with him forever. So even in his former state, okay. now at his present moment, he has how many natures? Okay, but after the resurrection, he became divine. So I wouldn't say No, 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 no. he was always divine. What do you mean he became divine? So, so I wouldn't say... I'm, I'm helping you out no, now. No, no, but I wouldn't... He was always divine. He never stopped being divine. Okay. Okay, he took on additional nature. So he was never human before. No, because right? the, the he was is, never. Listen, his listen. nature had changed. That's why when he came as family and business, no, 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 no. But listen to what I'm saying. about to highlight. No, because you were denying that. Earlier. No, when he, like, in terms of his, when I say his nature, okay, let him say his humanity. Speak your mind. Because when he came to the disciples, he came through the door without even opening the door. So his humanity had changed. So it would have been a divine nature. Human. So are you so telling me it's not that he was still because how can if he was still human? So when when he came to peace with the disciples and he spread with them, they said he came through the door without opening the door. But God said so that he all power was given to yeah. Jesus. So what I'm saying to you, can a normal human body walk through a closed door? No, no. So what I'm saying is, I think you're mis I think you're misunderstood. Yeah. I didn't ask you about the body at all. I asked you about the nature. Yes. Okay. So what is the humanity Did nature? Does the human nature of Jesus leave him what at crucifixion? I don't know what kind of Christian you are, but if you were a mainstream Christian, are you, are you a Protestant Catholic? I don't know, Catholic. But what no, but they, they all say that. What, what I'm trying to say is that at the crucifixion, that for Jesus came. His humanity was his life. Do you remember he shows his hand? Oh, yes. Post yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he have a human body? It was a body that appeared to be human. So what I, when I say this, is because he could walk through doors and stuff like that. Did he eat food? Did he eat food? Yes. Yes? Yes. Does, does the divine need but food? His nature, does the divine, his, does the divine flesh, need food? Does the divine need food? Why did he ask? Why did he feel hungry and he's demanding food? Yeah, because he wanted to show them. Because that he's he human. Had, yeah, they wanted to, he wanted to show a bodily resurrection. Bro, he's human. Post resurrection. Yeah, 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 he's human. Do humans walk through closed doors. Well, humans who have the power and ability might do. I don't know. I don't know the paranormal. <laughs> so if he had a paranormal nature, it's the same thing. No, you're not talking, look, you're talking about someone yeah. who has miraculous. Exactly, miraculous. Yes. So even. <laughs> if I ask you, can a human raise someone from the dead? Yes. No, 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 no. I'm saying yes to your, in terms of your question, not no, no. as an answer. Because you see, one thing you need to understand is that Jesus wasn't just human, or just wasn't divine, yes, post-incarnation. This is a belief of all mainstream Christians yes. that they maintain this hypostatic union, yes, for eternity, post-incarnation. I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you're not, I don't want you to speculate. I want you to go home, read it, and then come and talk to us. Yes? But the question remains, post-incarnation, how many natures are there in the Godhead? There's one divine nature. Yes, and? One divine nature. And? One divine nature. So there's no human nature at all? So you're well, going against the well, hypostatic union? Yes. The hypostatic union was when Jesus was on, on earth. So you would have to show me... No, I don't think Something you know. That you say, I don't think you know your you doctrine of hypostatic union. So. Let me let me see if I can quickly okay. find it. Because the human side, yes. the human it's aspect of the divinity will always remain even post post uh, resurrection. So even now that he's ascended to heaven, he would have the quality of the divine nature and the human nature because in the hypostatic union, the because human nature will always stay because, forever. Because that's the point. example. When we die and we are resurrected, we will not have a fit, normal, we will have a heavenly body. No, but yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So Jesus' nature, or the body that he would incorporate, would have not be the same as what we would consider humanity. That's why when we get resurrected, we will have a, a, a heavenly body. We wouldn't say we're just mortal. It's a different sense. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to. You keep talking about the body when I'm talking about the nature. Yeah, but that's. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is, is the human nature what going is, to remain okay, with Jesus? What, or what is the human nature? The human Let's nature is what the human nature. Is. The human nature, for example, if you read, uh, what do you say? Is it, what, what is that word that they normally use um, about the limiting, limiting Jesus? 
Uh, when, when, oh, I think it's um, second Polish or th Thessalon, where he loaded himself below the angels. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he took on. So, so as we see in John, the word became flesh, so that was Jesus' humanity. That is what the hyperstatic union is that the divine took on flesh. He had two natures. This is like every human has a nature. It's like you wake up, you get hungry. You know, you desire fleshly things. You have a spiritual nature too. You understand? That's when you're in worship to God and you feel like very spiritual. So we all have two natures. So when Jesus came into the flesh, he had that was his humanity, his human nature. So when we die, Philippians, that's what yeah, Philippians. So if you look at Philippians two seven, yes, where he emptied himself, yes, you will not find any other words in the Bible where this he's emptying himself has now been restored. That his emptying has been restored. Yes. So this human nature of his okay. will remain with him forever. Well, I think that's a, a false um, understanding. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh, I think you should re read up on Hapus and I think so. Because yeah. the thing is, what, yes, you're, what you're, no, talking no, you're talking about... So you're talking about when he returns to heaven? No, post-incarnation. Oh, sorry. Post-incarnation, post-resurrection, yeah, post this human yeah, post nature of his will remain. Yeah, but that's why I'm you saying your kids. understanding is wrong. So the hypothetical union is when he was here, not when he goes back to heaven. You need to read about you, you really need to read yeah. about you, Because you're saying something that's not yes. coherent with the, the definition of the, de the definition is when Jesus came on earth, he came in his humanity. So when Jesus, for example, said he doesn't know the hour or whatever, it doesn't mean when Jesus goes into heaven, he's still going to say the same thing because his nature is not the same as when he was on earth that's what i'm trying to clarify it's not like when he is in heaven he's going to need to go to the toilet or he's going to need to eat no, yeah, once again talking about the boiler yes but that's his humanity i'm talking about look that's the human nature did jesus acquire limitations what? when he became when he acquired this human nature did yes. he acquire limitations yes. okay these limitations were, so for were you, there with him. That means that will, those limitations will exist forever. That's why I'm saying it's a false understanding. Because those limitations won't exist forever. So you're telling me the li Jesus' human nature ended at resurrection? Jesus' or crucifixion rather. would have at least, to be theologically correct, would have been at least when he ascended. So you're saying his temporal nature yes. Yes, is something that is ending when so i yeah at least i think it would have been the <laughs> resurrection but, no, but you're going um, according you're going against no, mainstream no no because uh, listen in his humanity he didn't have all knowledge all power so that means hashim's uh, thing of the hypostatic union means when he's back in heaven these limitations are still going to apply that's that's what that's not the christian understanding no no what i'm saying is that this nature, the human yes. nature, does it leave him at all? Does it leave him? Does does it leave Jesus at all? Post incarnation. Uh, to accurately answer that, I would probably have to look into it. It doesn't leave him. No, no, it doesn't leave him because again, like I said, his limitations. That's why I ask you, what do you define as his his human? Nature? I mean, maybe maybe yeah. I'm not making sense in terms of what exactly these human natures are yeah. because I was under under yeah. the impression that. What is defined in Philippians 2.7 yes. is something which is his no, human nature. No, yeah, but that what defined in Philippians 2.7 is not forever. It's not, okay. So, so, so when you gonna, say... Because he's not going to be below the angels okay. so forever. You, so let, let me ask you this question again. Yeah. Whatever is defined as a human nature of Jesus, yeah. yes? Yeah. Which he acquired post-incarnation, yeah. yes? yes? Will that nature come to an end? Yes. When? Well, it would, I would... Don't speculate. Tell me when. Yeah, but you know. I, I would say the the latest would have been the ascension. But I would I place it to the resurrection when he came back in his glory, and he, he kind of then told the the apostles like when they started to believe in him and who he was, and he was doing more divine things like coming into the room without opening the door. It's not so. In Philippians, we see Jesus's nature was went below the, that of the angel, but. When he goes back to heaven, he's not going to be below the angels, he's going to be above the angels. So that nature that was limited is not going to be limited permanently, which is what I thought, I believe, Hashim was alluding to. Okay, so you're saying the human nature, whatever it is defined as, will yes. come to an end. 
Yes, I think you really should read up on how to set the universe. Okay. So I cannot find the references now. Yeah. But you should really read up on this because yeah. this is something which. So show me where it says that it will be forever, not just on Earth. That's the what I'm try trying to, dif to clarify. That, this that, is the church's teaching. Yeah, but you so have if to I were to if I were to ask you. I, yeah, but we every Christian believes in the hypostatic union, which was while Jesus was present on Earth. They don't believe that there's going to be a hypostatic union when Jesus is back into heaven. That he's still limited, that he still doesn't know certain things. That he will be still less than the angels. No, he'll be above the angels. That's where I think your understanding of the hypostatic union is. Uh, hypostatic union is just the two natures coming together. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But in heaven, it will be different. No, even in heaven. Okay, he's, let me ask you this. Yes. Why does it say Jesus is now? If you read, uh, for example, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 3 where this is post incarnation yes where Paul writes the head of Christ is God and also in 1 Corinthians 15 24 where he says he'll subject himself after he's conquered death and everything he subjects himself to God uh, what was the first one uh, 1 Corinthians 11 3 in fact that actually proves that the hypostatic union is, is still in force even even when he's in heaven and also he's always subject to God Exactly. Can't you totally believe 11, 11, that is above yes. the angels and equal with God? You can read it aloud if you want. <coughs> I really need to go now. So okay, yeah, we'll wrap, wrap it up. up yeah. yeah. But again, so if the head of Christ is God, yes. <laughs> that that still does not um, What do you what do you understand by that? So in the whole, in the Trinity, yeah. you have something called the economic Trinity. Yes. So you have the Father, who would be like the will, the Son, who applies the will, and the Holy Spirit, that also applies the will. So, so basically, so you have the Father. So, so according to the Church Fathers, yes. you have the uh, imminent Trinity and the economic Trinity. The imminent Trinity. You mean the ontological and the economic? Yes. So that they're ontologically, they're all the same. They have all the same uh, abilities, same attributes. Authority. That's, that's where it comes to the economic part. The economic oh, trinity. No. The economic trinity yes. is in the roles. Exactly. Yes. And yes. authority is not a role. Yes. And authority is where you are. It's your nature. Okay. So no, 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 no. If I ask no, you, no, no, no. The will is the will is the one that starts the objective like if I want to move my leg it comes from my my will so the father is the will so the father is the authority yes is the will not is not that's why ontologically they are the same no they're not if you're saying the father has authority and trying then to uh, who's in charge of those roles? yes but if you're trying to say there's a distinction in terms of divinity you'd be Kind of making the same claim as Jehovah Witnesses no, who I'm not, I'm believe not, there's I'm not, a, a main God. Jaws, and, I'm talking yes. about this verse here. Yes. When he says that, it doesn't say the authority. Head, listen. Yes. It doesn't say the head of Christ is the Father. What is the term used there? The head of Christ is the authority. The, the head of Christ is what? The it father. says the head of Christ is God, not yes. Father. Yes. 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 Why does it not say Father? It says God yeah. because Jesus, post incarnation, yeah, post resurrection, yeah. is still under the authority of God. Again, so if you're talking about the authority of God, yes, it's because God is like is the will. What do you mean God is the will? God is. Are you saying God, Are you saying Jesus did not have his own will? No. What I'm saying is, in the Trinity, they all have distinct roles. Do they have and distinct wills? They have distinct wills. They have distinct. Do they have distinct consciousness? They have distinct will. They, do they have, have distinct, distinct consciousness. They have distinct personality. That's all we do. Do they have distinct consciousness? Do, we, do they have distinct consciousness? Or is it one consciousness? It's one, three distinct personalities. No, that wasn't my question. They is have it, three is it one consciousness? They have three. You know what? You know what consciousness yes. means, right? Yes. Do they, they have one consciousness yes. or distinct consciousness? They would be distinct because they are. So it's three gods. No, <laughs> no. Because they, you just, you just you basically no, said they are three, three gods. Yeah, because you're not un, you're misunderstanding. Okay, make so misunderstand. they have their questions. own will. From that statement, you can say there's three gods. <laughs> no, no, three, from here, no, but three distinct consciousness, you, three yeah. distinct wills, yes. okay. three distinct persons. Okay. Because you, we, in, in, we, because in, we argue according to the church, church, you know, when you have distinct in, consciousness, in, in, according gods. to the church, you have something called perichoresis, which is the Father is in the Son, the Son is in the Spirit, and the Spirit is in the Father. So, that, in. so I thought they were all distinct. 
you one, agree that what do you mean in? Two, let me explain. What do the Christians say? One oesis, three hypostatus. Yes. So when you have perichoresis, it's the same thing. That the father is in the son no, no, because when, it's the when one you say, nature. When you say one oasis, yes. that is basically the substance. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. So when you when, so when, when, when Jesus says, three... I am in the father and the, uh, so the Father glorify me so I can glorify you and he said and and the, nothing to be essence. Yes, but when you glorify is, someone it's yes, nothing to be essence. There's, sta there's statements, for example, in terms of when Jesus is trying to You mean I'm in the Father and the Father in me? Yes. He also says the disciples are in, in, yes, in me. But this is but this is what he's trying to <laughs> Are you saying the disciples God's, also God's? Are God's too? Because Lahore. Jesus is making a statement to people who understand. So when Jesus speaks in parables, yes. he speaks them for a reason. So why bring parables when, okay, when the same parable is used for yes. the disciples? Because Jesus is trying I mean? to say the same way that the Father, the Son and the Spirit are acting in accordance, he wants the disciples to be one in Christ. That's why he called the church to be ah, one see, body. See what you've done now? Okay. Now you have done that they are one in purpose. But when it came to the Father and Son, you talked about essence. Because so why can't you accept when you Jesus and the Father the are one, different... they're one in purpose and not in essence? Yes. Why do you accept that if it's just the Father and the disciples, you only accept it? Because if we if we argued that the Father, sorry, that Jesus and his disciples are one in essence, you would not accept that. In fact, if, that would be blasphemy. If yeah, the disciples right. and the Father are so, one in essence. So, yes, yes. Yeah. so, so we if have we, to understand what did he mean by when he's yes, saying that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so if we say that God and Jesus are one, Yes. We can we can argue that they are one in purpose. But if you say that they are one in essence, then you have to then extend John 17 verse 21 where Jesus no, said, I am my disciples are one. If they are all God. And that's the same Greek if wording. They, as if well. they are all God and the Shema says, Here are Israel, your Lord God is one. We cannot distinguish them in any other way. If you're saying if they all are God, then you're a polytheist. If they all no, but you know what I'm trying to say. I know. What to, yes. As but, soon as you said yes. they have different distinct, I, yes, as soon as you said they have I, distinct consciousness, yes. that is self implies you're a polytheist. So, if you have a will, it means you have a consciousness. Yes. yes? Exactly. And if it's distinct, so, that means so you're. So what I'm trying to say is that when I said they had three, they just, when I said they had distinct wills, yes. you jumped on when you, I said they had distinct consciousness. Now I asked you, do yeah. they have different consciousness? But I'm saying, and you said they had distinct. But I'm saying, if I said they had distinct wills, you should have made that statement then, because it's the same thing. Yes, so if you, how do you if, say no, if, if they have this, no, no, you're right. Actually, no, no, he's right. If you're trying to tell us that they have distinct wills and distinct consciousness, then they are three different beings. No, because yes. if they communicate with each other, you have to have a distinct will because otherwise you're one because uh, the, the but, father, but if you're agreeing with me father, if they, if they okay. communicate no, no, you're, agreeing with me. Me you're, you're saying they have distinct no. wills and I'm agreeing with that you're also saying they have distinct, distinct consciousness I'm also agreeing with that yes. so, so what is the, the will and what, consciousness wait, is wait, the same thing yeah exactly yes. my point when you talk about someone who has got his own will and his own consciousness that itself is one being when you talk about three different beings having three different wills and three different consciousness is three That's different beat. beings, okay. which means you're talking about three different gods. No. And they can't be one person. You can, do, you can deny it, but that's exactly what you're saying. I'm sorry to say this. Okay. And I think with this, we should wrap it up. Because next time, if you come and study the hypostatic union, I'm pretty the sure... The hypostatic union doesn't have to do with what uh, Jesus is, uh, Jesus' is, uh, body, what Jesus' is form in heaven. No, I'm talking the about his nature. Yes. I'm talking about his nature. Yes. The nature of Jesus, because the you're, nature you're of the human nature will remain yes. with him you're, for you're, eternity. No, that's, that, that would be a heretical statement because Why? Jesus, the hypostatic union means Jesus took on the form of humanity. He loaded himself beneath the angels. Therefore, you're saying if that is eternal, Jesus in heaven is still below the angels because no, nothing. Has no, changed. no, I'm not saying how. How I, can it I change? said, look, I said, you're saying, listen, listen. I said, regardless of how you define the human nature, yes. yes? Do you believe Jesus has a human nature now? And what do you define human nature? Regardless of how you define it. Yes, because we were, you Regardless of how you define it. You Either you say he yes. left his human nature yes. when he resurrected, or you say the human nature is still, still there with you. Regardless of how you define it, that is not the question. The question to you is, yes, look, look, I, I am consistent. I'm saying his divine nature is with him and his human nature is with him. Both, that's an incorrect both, statement. Well, that's fine. That's what you have yes. to deny or accept. Yes, that's so, an incorrect statement. Let me ask you this question once again. Yes. Is Jesus' human nature still with him now? No. Good. So you do not believe in the hypostatic union being, uh, being uh, what, what is the oh. word? Eternal. 
I never made the claim it was eternal. No, but that's, you have to read up as to how the Christians actually believe no, this. because I, as I said, because the hypostatic union took place when Jesus became flesh. So he lowered himself below the angels to become, to take on humanity. So when he resurrected, he so still wasn't that he left. So you're saying that he left that nature yes. when he, when yeah. he ascended? After the, yes. So right. No, no, it would have been after the resurrection. Wait a minute, which nature did he, did he actually uh, uh, reduce? The divine nature or the human nature? Well, he empties himself of his, uh, his, his nature. Which good, nature? Good, good which nature? Human well, or divine? He emptied himself of what? Of his, uh, some of his divine nature. Oh, no. Which means he's not fully God. No, because you're saying it took him when he was human. He was fully God. No, because wait, according wait, to the... Wait, 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 there's no point. There's no point. Now let me tell you this. So yeah, according to the church, yes. or, well, you have, like I said, you have this notion of called perichoresis, where the Father is in the Son, the Son is in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is in the Father. So even in Jesus' humanity, because when we go to Isaiah, uh, sorry, Deuteronomy 18, 18, and it talks about the prophet to come, that God will put his word into his mouth. So the, the Father, the presence of the Father, and the Spirit was still within Christ. So this is what... I'm talking about Philippians 2. Yes. According, to, according to Philippians 2, 7, did he become lower than the angels? So I, I don't yes. know. What became lower than the angels? Because that road is very bumpy. Which nation? Why not? Well, it would have been... Well, it been You're in, in his, pickle, bro. No, no, because you in are his in divine pool. nature, he emptied himself of some of the things. So when he said he did not know the Father, that would be one of them. My friend, it's a very simple question. Yes. When he says when he became he lower than the angels, yes. Yes. which nature became, became lower than the angels? <laughs> you can't be right. So it would have been his divine nature. So Thank you. Is not so fully functioning when, God. Listen, listen. When the nature, you said the nature doesn't change. Now he's saying nature changes even less than the angels. Really, really, you should go and read up on the Trinity. Because what you're doing is, these are multiple, uh, what do you say? Heresies, I would say, I don't know. Multiple heresies you're committing with. And you really have to be grounded in your understanding of apostolic union and the Trinity. Because what you're saying, when you keep saying that nature doesn't change and now all of a sudden his nature has changed that change. below that of an angel even, yes. then it shows that you're, you're not talking about God, you're talking about someone who's a demigod. Someone who's not almighty God, but someone who's, a, who's someone less so, than God. Yes, so then you would have to understand. So in terms of Jesus knowing his humanity, his divinity. Yes. So Jesus took on the Is form of... Is that a change of, in nature? Jesus took... So let me explain. So Jesus yeah, took on the form of humanity. So then there were certain things that he was subjected to through the Father. Because he spoke through the will of the Father. In Jesus' divine nature, he would speak through his own will. Are you sure? Yes. They, they, so, they, they all agree. Shall I show you where that doesn't happen? Okay, when so Jesus says, I've not come by my will, yeah. but by the will of the one who and, sent me. And I said to you, the economic trinity yeah. is that the Father is the will. So, what do you mean, what do you so, mean by the will? So the, they all have their different roles within the trinity. No, no, what do you mean the Father is the will? What do you mean by that? So everything would emanate from the Father. Which means he gives so a the, command. The, the Father begat which the means, Son. Which means, he gives, the, the, which means he gives a command, right? Yes. So who's in charge of the roles within the Trinity? Who's in charge? Of the roles. In an economic Trinity, who's in charge of the roles? What, what do you mean? Hierarchy. By? Okay. Okay. Do you see a hierarchy within the authority within the Trinity? Are they all, all equal as one? They are all equal. In, in terms of authority, are they equal? Are you sure? In terms of the Father, the Father is like the will. No. In terms of authority, are they all co-equal? The Father would be like the will. Are they all equal in the authority? The father I didn't ask like, about the will, yeah, I asked about authority. If, yeah, but if I'm trying to, if, what is the will? The will is the initiator. Which means the command of God, right? Yes. So who gives the command within the Trinity? The Father. Thank you. Which means he's, yeah. the, he's the authority. He's the boss. That's, that's what I exactly. said. Exactly. <laughs> yes. That's why I said. So when, he, when, when you have yes. someone within, so in so terms of authority, the Father is the highest in authority within the Trinity. Because it How says the head, the, 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 even the Holy Spirit, he will not speak of his own. Yes, he will only say what he hears. No, so even but, no, but, not equal, but the thing is, okay, it's again, not equal let, me, let me give you an example from the scripture because because they all have this is from no, no, because they give up, yeah, because your John 16 14 clearly says that the Holy Spirit will not speak of his own, he will only say what he hears. So the Holy Spirit doesn't even have the ability to speak 
without the permission of his boss, i.e. God Almighty. Okay, and I'll, I'll so how does this constitute an equal uh, Godhead in this trinity? There's no equality. equality. They're, said, not, they're not even equal, equal, and one's are higher than the other. I, I said that that's why you have to understand the economic trinity. Okay, and so what is the yeah, economic, economic okay, means they hope if the economic trinity if, means they yeah. have different roles. Exactly. But then I asked him, who's but, in charge of these roles? Okay. Who? So, God. Who's oh, in charge yeah, of the roles? But, so the father. So what you're saying is not something new to the church. No, no, I'm not saying because it's new. If they, if they all have roles, it means they do something differently. So okay, let me ask you. It's going to be are they, the role of the father are they is to be the will. Are they co equal in their essence? Yes. In the nature? Yes. Okay. Is the father, is the father mortal or immortal? The father is mortal. I'm sorry, immortal. Is the second person of Trinity mortal or immortal? Immortal. Or who died on the cross? Both of them? No, 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 let him answer, let him answer. Who died on the cross? The son in his humanity. No. Which person died on the cross from the three? The son in his humanity. Was the son the second person of the Trinity? Yes. Good. Did the second person of Trinity die? The son in his humanity. You know when you use humanity? Yes. Remember I asked you earlier, your nature yes. and your person are linked? So the divine nature is immortal and the you, humanity was I'm immortal. explaining to you yes. what I what uh, what I, what it means when a person dies. Yes. yes. The nature, when you say in his humanity, the humanity is his nature. Yes? The nature is linked to what? Or to whom? The person. Okay? So when I asked you from the three, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, which person died? In his humanity. Carry on, carry on. In his humanity, the son. The second person of the Trinity. Yes. Yes? yes. Did the second person of the Trinity die in his humanity? Yes. Good. Did the first person of Trinity die in his humanity? The first person, no. In, sorry, not in humanity. In any form? No. No. Did the second person of uh, uh, the Trinity die in his humanity? In his humanity? Yes. Yes. It's still the same person, right? Who died? It wasn't another person who died. Because that would be heresy of the Nestorians. Yes? Two persons, two natures. Yes? But we don't believe but that, you do we? have to understand what the nature is. So you no, have the, the divine nature is a My immortal. friend, I, I specifically said in his humanity. Yes. So I'm already taking into account yes. the human nature. Yes. yes? But when I say the nature is linked to the person, you need to acknowledge that it is the second person of the Trinity who died. Even if you say in his humanity, yeah. it is still that person who died. You see what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't a different person. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, that's when a person it. dies, yeah. what do you call that person? Uh, mortal. Yeah, when someone dies, it's mortal. Yes. yes. Now, once again, let me ask you the question. Is the second person of the Trinity... Yeah, but your, your definition of immortal is flawed. Okay, I didn't even define immortal. No. How, define it? Yeah, but How do you know it is flawed? Yeah. Because... Did I... Did you did you ask me for the definition? No. Okay. So even before I defined it, you have already made a judgment. Okay. So, what is so why your... didn't you ask me? Okay, what is your definition Okay, my of immortal? definition of immortality yes. is the separation of the soul from the body. Do you agree? The separation, but if, means if it, God is sorry, sorry, not immortality, mortality. So, immortality is not dying. That is the definition of immortality. Someone who does not die. Okay. Okay. Do you agree with that definition? Immortal. Mortal means you can you can die. Yes. The immortal means you cannot die. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you the question again. But you did, did but the first person of the Trinity die? No. First person. Did the second person of the Trinity die? No. No. So who died? So no person no, died. No, no, in, in, his, died yeah, in, his, in his humanity. Yeah, but he's still the same person, bro. Don't you understand? In his, you keep his, him, that hypostatic union. Yes. For example, like when we spoke about photons having two natures yes. that coexist. Yes. The humanity of Jesus, which was just the flesh, yes. and the divine stayed intact. So the body died. The humanity, so the divine, did not die. How many persons the are there? In these two natures, how many persons are there? There's one person. And who is that person from the Trinity? Who's that person? The son. Yes, yes. The second person yes. of the Trinity. Yes. So which person died on the cross? Which person? From the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, who died? One of them or none of them? The Son in his humanity. Yes, one of them, right? Yes. That means he's immortal. Thank you. That means what? That means he's immortal. Immortal. Mortal. 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 Mortal.
anyone who dies. Yeah, so by if definition, you, if they're all immortal beings, you know, they you know what die. you're thinking. I think, wait, I think you're making the same mistake like many Christians make the mistake. Okay. You're thinking the natures are somehow in two different but persons. The, the, wait, wait, wait. The divine nature didn't die. Bro, bro, listen, listen. Yes. The two natures are linked to one person, not to two persons. And if it's two persons, there is a heresy of Nestorianism. Yes? yes? So these two persons is a heresy. So, so the flesh, what you're believing... The flesh wait, is wait, the wait, wait, wait. When you talk about the flesh, yes. and when you talk about the divine, yes, these are the two natures you're talking about. But it's still linked to one person. Who is that one person? The second this person. This is why you have the hypostatic union, wait, wait, so yes, someone yes, can die I, in the human. I'm not denying. I'm yes. not Sorry, denying the I hypostatic union. If I may, you gave the example of the photons. Yes. And even in photons, when you, yes, they sometimes do have separate. Uh, you can either find their Two your, your, yeah. You can either yes. find their location or you can define their speed, but that doesn't make them different because it's the exact same one. Is that their it's one photo. Ultra, but, their ultra but do they have two high. contradictory natures? The wave and the photon. Yes, they do. Yes. But they, that that that, no, that no. does not make them, they do. But they, that does not make them different atoms. They're I didn't still say the they same were. wave. Yeah, it's still the same light, basically. Yes. Yes. So in this case, it's still the same person. Even though they have two different natures, yes. it's still the same person. Do you not realize that? Okay. When you die, they do not say your kind nature died, or your angry nature died, okay. or your or your generous nature died. They say you, the person, dies. Are you with me? Yes. So from the whole idea, listen, the yes. whole idea of this incarnation and taking upon flesh is so that Jesus can die for all humanity. Yes. yes? The only way this person can die yes. is by changing his nature from divine to now divine and human. Are you with me? Okay, it's still on, the same person. On. It's still the same person. In the hypostatic union, who is the person? The second person of the Trinity. From the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, who died? That is the key question you need to answer. The second, the Son died in his humanity. Which person from the first, second and the third died? The Son. Which is which person? The second. Thank you. So one of them is a mortal. Not immortal, no, mortal. Because the nature, the divine nature didn't die. The um, flesh died. This the, guy flesh exactly. the flesh died though. Listen, flesh listen, is corruptible. You, you, do you guys not understand okay. that the nature wait, 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 is always linked to a person? Okay, wait, listen, wait, spirit. Okay, wait, you can't, you wait, can't wait, use the same laws for spirit. Spirit is dead. You can't use the same laws for spirit. You have a body, you have a soul. When your body dies, does your soul die? No, no, exactly. Does not mean. mean he's immortal? Oh, wait, wait. Does it is mean he's immortal? Is his soul immortal? I didn't ask you, is his soul. This is this person immortal? Is his is this person immortal? immortal. Yes. Is if he? you come back to life, then he's no, immortal. No, you don't know what immortal means. Then. Listen, my, brother. Your soul, my friend. Wait, immortal wait. means exempt from death. You know, you really, you really have to look up the word immortal. Okay. Immortal doesn't mean that you won't be resurrected. Of course, everyone will be resurrected. But what does God say in 1 Timothy 6.16? Okay. He alone is immortal. Okay. Why does no, he use... No. But, you, but your understanding One. of immortal is, is flawed. How? You, because, How? Because you said immortal means you cannot be destroyed. Right? Immortal means you cannot be destroyed. No, oh, you, you know, I already it, it means your life cannot end. No, 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 no. Timothy 6, wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. It says that he alone okay. is immortal. So, no, no, no. our angels are immortal. So, wait, so, 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 so